the legend, the one and only Lindsey Crosby joins us today, and he's going to share with us why Logan Ohapi is not only the catcher of the future for the Angels, but the catcher we need this year. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And uh, thank you for making Locked On Angels your very first listen of the day. Every show is free and available on all platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Thanks for being here with us for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. You know, one of the best things about working for the Locked On Podcast Network is that we have tons of resources from all over sports, especially Major League Baseball. And one of those sources is our good friend, Lindsey Crosby, who's the host of Locked On MLB Prospects. We've encouraged you to check out his show many, many times on our show. And today yep. we're doing an epic crossover with Locked On MLB Prospects. So you'll see us over there on his show and you'll see Lindsey on our show today. And we're asking him all kinds of questions about Angels Prospects, who can make an impact in 2023? And of course, Logan Ohapi behind the dish and at the plate. He looks pretty good there too. Mike, let's get into that interview right now. What a day for a Locked On crossover between Locked On Angels and Locked On MLB Prospects with your host, Lindsey Crosby, who's a prospect encyclopedia, going deep on the MLB stars. Sorry, I'm reading the copy. I can't do I have the copy memorized, Lindsey. Do you know that? Do you know that? Heck yeah. We've been hyping up Lindsey for a long time. It's great to have you, bro. Thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. This is this is one of my favorite shows to do, uh, just because nice. you guys are so much fun. And then our red and our green work really well together. Like That's my right. green and your red work yes. well. I'm the Yoshi to your Super Halo Bros. It's great. That's right. 100%. And thank you for bringing the strong beard game, bro. Look at that beard. If you're on yes. YouTube right now, oh my goodness, it's great. That's right. <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening to this on audio, go find it on YouTube just to see the beard. It's a really yeah, good beard. It's, like, I'll be it's honest. Worth it. <laughs> it's worth Absolutely. it, guys. <laughs> That's good. Hey, as we get into uh, the conversation, so Mike and I are just really intrigued with you know, the episode that you did about the Angels prospects. Uh, before pitchers and catchers reported that was a fantastic mm -hmm. episode Thank you. but then we wanted to dive in a little bit deeper just on a few of these guys because obviously they're in the top 100 they're up there for a reason uh, people are excited about them uh, we get excited whenever the angels have a top 100 prospect edgar caro ben joyce sam bachman all guys that we're getting a look at here in spring training but tell us a little bit about edgar caro and whether or not He's a future angel or a possible trade piece, something along those lines. What do you think, Lindsay? So I think a lot of the the future for Edgar Cuero kind of breaks down to, to two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, the bigger, like the, the first thing to figure out is what format will automatic balls and strikes take going forward? If you mm. have a system where balls and strikes are completely automated, which you saw in the minors some last year, where the umpire literally is waiting for the earpiece to tell him was that a ball or a strike, then Edgar Cuero has a little bit longer uh, development time before he can become a big leaguer. It's something where, like, the, the the raw tools for defense are there. He's got good movement side to side. He's got good agility. He can block a ball in the dirt. He's just a little bit raw on some of that stuff. Hmm. If you have an automated ball, completely automated balls and strikes, that eliminates a lot of the learning curve that he has in front of him for the defense. I'm on the record as being a person. I think if you see any sort of automated balls and strikes, it'll be the challenge system. Hmm. We saw that in the Arizona Fall League last year. Yeah, uh, you can the 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 pitcher, the catcher, the hitter can can challenge the umpire's ruling, and they'll look at it with the automation system and give you a give you an answer. I've seen a clip of that. I love that. It's like it is literally what they show you on TV. <laughs> yeah, it's very it's very fast. It's very yeah. quick. And what I love is only the pitcher, the catcher and the hitter could do it. Nobody else. The, wow. um, the dugout can't do it. The manager can't do it. Only those three players. And you only get I think it's three a game. Interesting. But but Edgar Cuero is very much like an like a bat first 
guy, right? He mm. is like o- offensively, that is where he's going to make his money. That is where you're going to find a way to get him in the lineup no matter what. Like, w- look at what he did in the Inland Empire last year 312, 435, 530. One of the big milestones I have is like a 300, 400, 500 slash line. Mm. That is a dude. That's not just right. a guy. That's a dude. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, hit 17 home runs, uh, 30, math in my head, 54 extra base hits right. in 111 games. So ju- like almost one every other game. Fantastic numbers. Uh, sh- struck out 91 times, less than once a game. Struck out, uh, sorry, so walked 73 times. So almost as many times as he struck out. And it's, it's, uh, Two swings, two different swings, right? Hmm. He's he's more he's more uh, passive, I guess, in contact oriented from the right side. He gets more more power from the left hand side, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because you can pick and choose selectively with what works based in every situation. Uh, I do think that depending on Logan O'Hoppy, who somebody will talk about later, depending on how his offense plays at the big league level. I think Edgar Cuero is somebody that you have you have plenty of runway with, right? Mm. You have plenty of time to you can keep him in the minors long enough to get his defense to where you think it's average or close to average. And then he's someone who can DH on days he's not catching. And you can kind of minimize the defensive exposure to him. But also, if Ohapi is as good as we think he is, which, spoiler alert, I do, <laughs> uh, then Cuero becomes a very intriguing trade piece because it is so hard to develop good offense from the catching position. So you've got some flexibility. I do think he has what it takes to be an angel. Mm-hmm. It's just a question of uh, in what format and how, like, what kind of defensive exposure do you have to work out with him? Mm. Mm. How about uh, how about Ben Joyce? You mentioned a lot of power. Uh, ben Joyce has got a powerful arm, and Whew. his first appearance in spring training. I mean, he threw up and in, and 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 that batter had to get out of the way quickly. And there's you know there's stories of him hitting 105. He hit between like 95 and 98 when he came up and pitched in that first game. So tell us a little bit about him. Is he worth the hype? What does he need to work on? Is he somebody we'll see this season? Okay, so I'm going to give you a co- cost for concern and then a cost to be. Hopeful, right? Cool. So the cause for concern, when you think about Ben Joyce at Tennessee, uh, one, I think that that radar gun was a little bit hot. I was at a, an Auburn-Tennessee game, and Auburn's pitchers were throwing a little harder than they've ever thrown at any other game. So <laughs> funny that gun works. may have been a little bit hot. <laughs> huh. But what was interesting about his usage at Tennessee is he wasn't their closer. He wasn't even a high-leverage reliever. He was working in the middle innings. And so to me, it's a little bit optimistic to assume that he's going to be up in a meaningful capacity at the big league level a year removed from being a middle reliever Mm. uh, in college, albeit a very good team who had a good closer. Uh, The thing here is it all comes down to, believe it or not, it all comes down to the slider. So the fastball, very good, very good velocity on it. Obviously, he sits, you know, 98 to a 102 regularly. Like you said, it can hit 104, 105. Doesn't always throw it for a strike. It sometimes kind of comes out a little high, sails on him a little bit. Uh, he'll he'll miss to the arm side. But he has to be able to land that slider for a strike. It's one of those big horizontal movers. Uh, it's really good at getting chased because it comes out looking like the fastball out of the hand. Oh, interesting. But but if you can't land it for a strike, it makes it difficult to uh, to count on it, on, on him being able to get guys out reliably. Now... Uh, when you saw him at the end of the year last year in Double A Rocket City, he got like 13 appearances, 13 games, and he hadn't pitched in 40 something days when he debuted in his first game. And the slider looked a little bit better, and the fastball velocity was just about there. We didn't really see him have a lot of walk issues like he had in college, and so you can see the work ethic is obviously there, and the development is there. And I did not catch him throw over the weekend. I, I I did not see that outing, but just based on how he got better over that 45 days or so makes me think that uh, he's, he's figured out which slider grip finally is going to work for him. And if mm. that is the case and he has figured that out, it feels like you're going to be able to see him if uh, probably early next year, the question will be, will he be a, a, a closer? Will he just be a middle of the, of the bullpen reliever? Uh, he does have a changeup, like technically, but 
obviously, if you have a, a, a sub, an 80 grade fastball and then you have an average to above average slider, uh, you still need a better second pitch and maybe even a little bit of a third pitch to be an effective high leverage reliever at the base. Right, right. Speaking of uh, pitchers that we're excited about, Sam Bachman yes. is, uh, of course, our number one pick from the 2021 draft. They're stretching him out to be a starter, but Phil Nevin did mention after Bachman's outing the other day, maybe using him in the season as like a bullpen arm down the stretch. Maybe he becomes our K-Rod of... 2023 right and hopefully the angels are in the playoffs so they can use a (laughs) k-rod yes like sam bachman please Uh, is is that something you see happening is is that a possibility do you think he's ready for that sort of thing well i I think one he has to be healthy right he's just had so many injury issues he had the the back spasms the biceps inflammation and they've affected him over his last season and yeah yeah like he couldn't properly finish on some of the the secondary pitches last year because of the back injury. And so it's kind of hard to evaluate off of the stats of what he did last year. But I think that the idea of using him late in the season as a reliever, you've got so many Brewers guys in this front office. Mm. And that's what they did with Brandon Woodruff and Corbin Burns, both of them. They broke them into the league really as, uh, as, as relievers late in the season and then over the offseason stretched them back out to be starters. And so I think that's something, if he's healthy, you can see that he has a lot of stuff, but the, the fastball slider, both from what I understand, he's backed the fastball velocity up just a little bit. Yeah. So rather yeah, he than looked, being, he looked good on uh, I think it was Sunday that he came yeah. out and, and pitched and it looked like that fastball velocity was getting back to where it should be. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's something that it's a very like almost violent delivery, right? Yeah. Uh, high effort, and so that's obviously something you worry about with injuries, but then right. also that kind of pertains to, like, that's why he walked five guys per nine last year when he was healthy, was because of the extra effort there. Uh, but having a plus fastball, a plus slider as well, and then the cutter, from what I understand, the cutter has gotten better over the offseason. I didn't see any cutters that he threw, but I've heard it's better. So if you have that third option, and then he had a changeup that he'd flash occasionally, provided that he's healthy. I think you could see him late later this year. And again, I do like how that stuff would play in a one inning stint or two inning stint out of the pen late in the year as you're you know chasing for the pennant there in the you know trying to win the division uh, and and going deep into the playoffs. I can absolutely see it working, provided again that he's healthy. It's that Brewers talk that gets me excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He said Corbin Burns, and I went, ooh. <laughs> That's right. Corbin That's Burns, right. Brandon Woodruff, come again. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Let's make a trade. <laughs> <laughs> Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. We're at the midway point of the NBA season, and now's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to the point scores to threes made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance at a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen today. And it's a Locked On crossover extravaganza between Locked On MLB prospects and Locked On Angels. Of course, you've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. You've got Lindsey Crosby, host of Locked On MLB prospects, talking some Halos baseball, Halos prospects, names that we're excited about. In fact, we want to talk about Zach Neto, the number one pick of the 2022 draft for the Halos. Lindsey, how far away is Zach Neto from the bigs? Honestly, not as far as I thought he would be when he got drafted. Okay. Huh, right? So, like, coming out of Campbell, there was a lot of conversation amongst, I'm going to call it the prospect apparatus, the people like me who watch prospects for a living, about the prospect apparatus. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he had a bunch of, like, extra stuff in his swing, right? It was, it was just, it was, a, it was a big leg kick, and his hands were moving around. It was a lot of stuff in the swing. And so... We had questions about how the, the 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 offense would translate to wood bat and would translate into big league pitching, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he comes out, he spends a week in Tri City, which, for the record, get everybody out of Tri City because the <laughs> it's so hard to have good offense there. You, it's almost impossible to evaluate a hitter in Tri City. Interesting. So 
He goes to Rocket City, and in a month, 320, 382, 492. Yeah. Four home runs, 13 extra base hits. Uh, the, the strikeout rate was a little bit higher. Wait, we struck out 29 times in 30 mm-hmm. games, so right about once a game. Uh, and it, it kind of fits in with the the profile that we had. Very aggressive hitter, but uh, the, the leg kick wasn't as big. The hands were calmer. He did a lot of work mechanically to, to streamline the swing, and you could see that it was working uh, there at the double A level. So if the improvements to his offense have have continued, I can see him above average defense at short. You mm. can see probably a plus hit tool. Average power, I think. He, the, the exit velocities aren't like amazing, but he gets good good spin on the ball. He mm. can pull some stuff. I could see him being a 20 home run guy. Mm. Uh, it, it's it's something where I could see the end of this year. You're giving him a couple weeks, enough to keep him rookie eligible, and then compete for the job out of spring training in 2024. Yeah. Uh, and again, not something that we thought was going to happen when he was taken. We were, you know, we we thought he's going to have a little bit longer development profile because of some of these offense issues. But this is how the player development in this system has improved. They were able to iron some of that stuff out between the draft and his debut in Rocket City. Hmm. Does he does he stick at shortstop? In the bigs, what do you think? Unless he has like, like size wise, he's not too tall. He's about I think about six one or so. Yeah. Uh, provided that he doesn't slow down, I think he'll be fine. The big thing here, and you see this a lot with the small school guys like Campbell. The big thing is just he needs more reps because of the timing, mm. right? It's something where he has to learn that internal clock and understand this is how long it takes a big league hitter to get to first mm. because so often it's the kind of people he played in at Campbell a year ago are on average aren't as fast as a big league player. Right. And so there were some times where the only real issue I had with his defense was he would try to rush a a transfer and a throw. And it's like, you probably should have held on to that simply because you didn't have a chance to beat the guy. If you hold the ball, you can maybe keep the runner from moving from second to third, things like that. So I think the defense is good. It's just a matter of learning that clock and that's going to be reps but that's typically something that can come pretty quickly for somebody who as in, is as instinctual as he is. Is there a major league comp like present or past that you could compare Zach Neto to? Ooh, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> that's, it's just, oh, I'm trying to figure that out. Um, off the top of my head, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm blanking on a name for the defense because he's got such a weird, not a weird, such an unusual profile of a small school guy mm. Who yeah. advanced so quickly? Yeah. Um, the defense, his his defense. It reminds me. You're probably not going to love to hear this. It reminds me of somebody like a David Fletcher. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, defense where you're not ever going to think, oh man, he is absolutely the best defender in the world. Sure. But he's going to make all of the plays that you need him to make, and some of the ones that you don't necessarily expect. I do think yeah. the arm is probably better than David Fletcher's. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, but. He's he's definitely more promising as a hitter than a defender, but he's going to be at least above average defensively. Okay, all right. What a lot of people are curious about the leg kick. What what becomes of that as he advances? Is that something that you think will stick? Is that part of his success, or are big league coaches going to be like, nah, get rid of that? <laughs> so I think part of that comes down to what is the leg kick there for, right? Yeah. Some some guys have a small leg kick, and it's a timing mechanism. It's to help them stay on sync kinetically. Right. Some guys have a leg kick and his being a little bit larger, I'm guessing that's probably a bit to generate power. Mm. And so that's something as you get him into a professional strength and training program, uh, he adds some a little bit more natural strength. He does have the physical projection ability. Like you can see him gaining more strength. Not a lot of college players can do that. I can see him doing that. I think it naturally calms down as he gets more uh, you know, foundational strength in the body. Mm-hmm. And does it need to artificially generate it with the, with the kick? And I think seeing it be smaller already is kind of a key that it was a a physical thing more so than it was a timing thing. And so you can minimize it and eventually get rid of it with some strength work. Let's talk about Kyron Paris because he's another guy mm-hmm. that has been really intriguing to Angel fans. Uh, where does he slot in this year, next year? Does he have some work to do? Where, where, where are your thoughts on Kyron? So... 
I think the two big things for Kyron Paris, uh, one, he needs to stay healthy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then two, he's got to work on the strikeout. So you look at him in high A, and I know high A is bad for offense, but high A last year, 89 games, 117 strikeouts. Hmm. Uh, now, when he got to Rocket City, that rate kind of came down a bit. It's a, it's a small sample size, and that's the problem with this, 14 games. But 14 yeah. games, 14 strikeouts to 10 walks. So – uh, the pitch recognition got better. You know, he didn't strike out as much. The question is, which one is the real Kyron Paris, right? Mm. Uh, you know, the the high walk rate is pretty consistent with who he is as a player. Uh, he has that kind of contact driven. I, I don't necessarily think the power is that great. Mm. Uh, he, you know, he he did get more line drives last year. Uh, it's probably going to cap out at ten to fifteen home runs, but. I do think the hit tool can get to above average. Uh, the the plus speed definitely helps. Uh, and and again, he was doing really well when he got promoted to Double A Rocket City. I think some of that yeah. was the adjustment to High A last year. But it's all going to come down to the strikeouts. One of the big things that we talked about on I think it was on on Monday show actually mm -hmm. was one of the most predictive stats for batting average for a player is strikeout rate. Because yeah, it's okay. not so much the quality of your contact, it's the quantity. The more opportunities you have, like the more times you can put a ball into play, the better your batting average is going to be. That's just mm -hmm. kind of how it breaks down. Okay. And so with the strikeout rate being 30% or so for his career, that has me wonder a little bit about what is the ceiling for the hit tool. I think he can get to average. And I think if that pitch recognition you saw in Rocket City sticks around, you're looking at somebody who can play second base. The arm is good enough where if you need him at short, he's probably a little bit stretched, but he can do it. But he's going to be like probably an above average second baseman. So they're going to want to see how this season in Rocket City plays out and before they can make any decisions on him. I definitely would put him back in Rocket City, make him the everyday second baseman, probably make him the backup uh, shortstop as well mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. you can uh, go back and forth depending on, you know, make sure he's good with both for the versatility. But uh, let him focus in on you are going to be a second baseman just because of the limitations with the arm strength. Uh, but we want to see was the better uh, strikeout rate and the better walk rate at Rocket City. Was that an aberration, a small sample size, or is that legitimate development? He's only 20 years old, or he was yeah. 20 years old right. then. So that <laughs> yeah. may have legitimately been development. We just don't know. He missed so much time because of the the broken bone in his hand and the, uh, the broken tibia and coronavirus and all that, where – we don't have as big of a sample size as we'd like to have on Kyron Paris. We're talking with Lindsey Crosby, and Lindsey, the name that is on the tip of everybody's tongue for Angel fans here in Southern California is Logan Ohapi and somebody that we're really excited about. And then he comes and hits a mammoth home run on Tuesday. And so I got a bunch the other of text way, messages. by the way. Right. Yeah. And it was the other way. <laughs> I'll go to Taco, baby. Text messages That's right. People giving me the, the flex arms and people excited <laughs> about that. And you mentioned on your show that you have high hopes for Logan. So could you could you give us a bit of a deep dive on Logan Ohapi? Yeah, it's so to me, it's very rare, uh, both center field and catcher. It's very rare to see somebody who has the potential to be above average to plus both offensively and defensively. Mm. Right. Those are the two positions where it's hardest to get a balanced player. And it feels like he has the ability to be a balanced player. The the defense. Uh, prerequisite at catcher, right? You can't have bad defense behind the plate. And I think that his defense is somewhere between above average and plus. I've seen both. Uh, what I love, the arm, I, the, I think is his arm, uh, plus arm strength, but he's very accurate with it. And the release huh. is very good. That's going to help the running game, especially the big thing people aren't talking about this year. Everybody's talking about the pitch clock. The big thing we're not talking about is uh, the limitation on, on throws over to first right. base on right. pickoff throws. And a couple teams have already identified we need to make sure that we have catchers that have strong arms that are comfortable with back picks throwing over themselves because there's no limit on how many times your catcher can throw over. Right. Mm. And so Logan Ohapi having a plus arm, I think, is going to give him a very uh, high floor and make him very effective at helping control the running game, especially because your pitchers are limited with that. Uh, you know, the blocking, he's very – he. For being somebody who doesn't have great speed, he still is very athletic. He's very good laterally. He's very good popping up to, to make a block, dropping down, to stops up in, in the dirt. I've seen his pop times come in under 1.9 seconds, yeah. which is 
pretty nice. I think the MLB average is 1.93 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So wow. below, you know, a, a, a better than average pop time. And then everything off the field, a lot of the conversations, whether it was, you know, with other prospects, with coaches, he's very good at some of the mental stuff that goes with being a catcher, understanding uh, uh, game plans, retaining scouting reports, calling a game, building rapport with his pitchers. And that's always uh, one of the hardest parts for any catcher, especially a prep catcher. He was taken in the 23rd round, a round that doesn't exist in 2018. And so yeah. credit, credit to the Phillies for seeing him, credit to him for building that. Offensively, I think that he's, he's a lot of people have him listed as average hit tool, average power. I think he's a little bit better than that. Hmm. And the big thing for me is the swing, like his, he's improved the contact ability, but the swing is more, it's more sustainable as a line drive swing versus some sort of dramatic uppercut. Right. Hmm. And so improving his contact ability and then having this, this flatter kind of bat path, it stays in the zone for longer. It may limit the overall uh, ceiling, and that's kind of kind of going to come back to his his just foundational strength that he has. But he does very well as far as the bat is in the zone for a long time. It is quick to get into the zone. And once you add in a little bit more natural strength, I mean, he's 22, 23 years old. Once he gets a little bit more natural strength, you're going to see a lot of more home runs come out of that. I predict he's going to end up defense like uh, power wise as a plus power threat hmm. who can I think at best give you something around 20 to 25 home runs this season you're going to be looking at less it's going to be a lot of doubles this year sure. yeah uh, but I just love how quickly that bat gets into the zone and how long it stays in the zone and I think that's not something you see from a lot of catchers they either have good offense and like, like Quero they have good offense and questionable defense or they have good defense and they you know they're their OPS is 500. And I think Logan O'Hoppy is going to be an outlier on that. And I think he's a good, a good, uh, a good look at to be in the top four or five vote getters for rookie of the year. Oh, I love that. As far as him being on this team and, and as hyped as we are, is there a risk that comes along with having a rookie catcher that is on a team that wants to make the postseason and putting a lot of pressure on themselves because, it's potentially Otani's last year with the Angels. I, I and, and it's not like we have a lot of other great options anyway. But but it, it's Max Stassi. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Max Stassi will definitely be on this team yeah. and and probably tandem with with Logan Ohapi. But I don't know. How do you feel about that? It, it, that seems to be kind of the only like hesitation I think I've seen from Angel fans and and kind of media as well. But what's your opinion? Yeah, I, I, I think it's something where the the very beginning of the season is going to be crucial for mm -hmm. Logan Hoppy. If he can get off to, to some early success uh, to kind of build the confidence that he belongs there. Look, like he got five games last year, so he got a taste. I would have loved it to be a little bit more than that. My, mm. my preference is kind of get a guy, you know, 15 games or so. You retain rookie eligibility still, but they have a little bit more of a window into this is how pitchers are going to attack me. And this is what I can learn from. I do think you, you, he has questions about the power ceiling in year one, because again, it's a big adjustment, bigger parks. Uh, he has a lot more on his plate than a typical new pr promoted prospect would. Yeah. But I do think that the, the, he has like that mental toughness and the resilience that he has. A lot of people, I know a lot of the guys in rocket city, they're about uh, two, two and a half hours for me. So I've hey. been to plenty of those games Nice, and a lot of the players that were there when he got there, he was there just about a month, but it, that star burned very brightly in that month. Mm, yeah. Uh, there was a lot of positive comments coming from the guys in that clubhouse about what he was able to do quickly to integrate with the pitchers, learn what they like to do, get comfortable with them. And you're going to see some of these guys like a Kai Bush, like a Sam Bachman, like a Chase Silseth. You're going to see some of these guys up at the big league level. If, if it's me, I have him, I pick two or three of the pitchers, and I say, you're going to catch their games mm. to start the season off. Mm. Uh, and rather than you managing the entire staff, we have a veteran in Max Stassi who's been here for a while. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you two or three pitchers. 
We're going to let you catch their games exclusively so that you know when you're going to go in. There's less for you. The, 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 the curve, the learning curve is, is shorter to get into the game and be fully effective. And then we'll expand your duties throughout the season. It's funny you mentioned that because Mike and I assumed, hey, opening day, Max Stassi, Shohei Otani, they often pair together. They've, they, they've worked together over the last two years. But then we get the note out of you know pitchers and catchers reporting. They have Ohapi catching Shohei, and they yeah, had him right. working on Shohei's bullpens for you know eighty percent of the time. So that was like a very interesting development for, from our end. <laughs> yeah, and and with Shohei being the type of pitcher that is very cerebral, uh, you know, pays a lot of attention to the fine details. I think that's a really good choice to to pair them together so that he can kind of mentor Logan, take him through like this is what you have to do to be successful at the major league level. And being able to partner with somebody like Shohei Otani and and hear from him, this is how I want to attack these hitters. It helps him understand the, the big league game plan and understand what you're trying to do a little better. So I think it's a great idea, uh, provided Shohei's okay with it. Obviously, it sounds like he is. Yeah. And so definitely, like that, that's the best way to do that. Do that and pick maybe one or two other guys and just assign those guys and say, this, these are your pitchers to start the season. Uh, you're going to have them exclusively. We'll expand to the full staff a little bit later. Yeah, love that. Is there a name in the last few seconds that we have together? Is there a name that we haven't mentioned or we're not paying attention to that we need to pay attention to in the Angels minor leagues? A guy, well, there's two real quick. One is you're going to see him in full season ball for the first time this year, but right-hand pitcher Walbert Urania. Hmm. Uh, he hmm. was in rookie ball last year, got in 12 games, 45 strikeouts in those 12 games, like 37 innings. Uh, has a fastball that can already hit 100 miles an hour, has a above Ooh. average to plus changeup. And the whole question here is like, can he find a third pitch? We've talked about that before. Can he find a third pitch? I hope pitch? so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm hearing these numbers like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out, bro. <laughs> if you can teach him one of those like horizontal sweepy sliders, then you've got the, the fastball that would great right up in the zone. You've got a vertical breaking uh, changeup. You've got a horizontal breaking slider. It's a great window, can fool a ton of hitters. And then right hand pitcher Victor Medeiros, 2022 sixth rounder out of Oklahoma State, uh, just has a ton of pitches, has an above average to plus fastball, mid 90s, throws a really, really good curveball. One of the best mm. curveballs in this entire system. He also has a two seamer, a slider, a change, needs to work on commanding the fastball a little bit. Uh, and I think some of that comes down to mechanical issues in, in the delivery. Uh, for the first time in a while, I have confidence that this pitch and development staff can help him streamline that delivery, get everything worked out. And so I have him as my breakout prospect in this system, somebody who should be able to be a quick mover, probably going to start off in high A. Great way to build pitcher confidence, put him in high A yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in this system. But could see him double A by mid to late point in the season, looking at up, coming up in 2024. Well, Lindsay, this has been a fantastic conversation. We hope that, uh, you know, Locked On Angels listeners have enjoyed it. We know they have because we have been sending them your way constantly because we want them to get all the info they can. And we hope that your listeners and viewers enjoyed uh, some questions from the resident Angels experts here at Locked On Podcast Network. So thanks for doing this crossover with us. I think... Thanks for having me. You guys make this fun. Your team is fun to watch. Uh, it's it's one of the more entertaining ones. And the great thing is, because the games are usually a little bit later for me since I'm over towards the East Coast, um, I usually fall asleep to the sweet sounds of Angels baseball. And it's there you go. There you Love go. It. And they'll be the games will be even shorter this year. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Maybe I'll finish them before I fall asleep. It's perfect. There, you, there it is. Yeah, Man, thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. And we thank you for making Locked On Angels your very first listen of the day. Now for your second listen, check out the Locked On Fantasy Baseball podcast. Win your league by listening to Matt and Dom every single day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcast, and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, be sure to give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and, of course, at Super Halo Bros 
on Twitter and Instagram. Get your questions in because we got a fan mail Friday coming up soon. So be sure to get your questions in for that. Hey, Mike, in the meantime, what do we have on deck for tomorrow's show? Well, MLB launched an economic reform committee, John, to address the payroll disparity between teams. So we're asking this question. What does that mean for baseball? But more importantly, what does it mean for our halos? We'll give you some answers tomorrow on Locked on Angels. Economic reform committee. There's no homework involved in this discussion. Make sure you put your name, date, and your class number. (laughs) (laughs) All right, friends. We hope you'll come back and join us for that conversation. In the meantime, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Big thanks once again to Lindsey Crosby for joining us today. And we'll see you right back here on Locked on Angels tomorrow.